can puke their guts out, and the next thing they do is take a drink. It's not something that I, uh, well, I never could take it. I couldn't even take the smell of it, let alone think about well, tasting it. My great-grandfather got rich in this country by making a liquor called Schlebovitz, which is a plum brandy. Still made in Serbia. That stuff, you, we used to use that stuff to light fires. <laughs> I'm serious. We have poured jars of it, we'd pour it on a fire and light it, and it would go up like a bomb. And they made their own wine in a 50-gallon barrel, which had a tap on it. <laughs> My stupid brother one time put his mouth on the tap and opened it. I've never seen wine come out of so many places in my life. It came out of his nose, out of his ears, you name it. I think it even came out of his eyes last time he did that. But when you, when you do that, when you pour wine into a gallon jug, you have to let it sit. And all of the sediment goes to the bottom. And then what you do is siphon off the top. And that is the good wine. The sediment is what they what was known as new wine, or grappa, and they would use that to cook with. They would, you know, the only thing you would do was cook with that, but nothing went to waste. It's like Yeshua talks about the, all the members of the body, even the ones that seem like they are dishonorable or honorable. Could you imagine not being able to go to the bathroom? You'd last about three days. You'd look like a pumpkin. It'd be horrible. It would absolutely be horrible. We need those parts. We gotta quit doubting the way, I mean, he formed us perfectly in the womb. He knew what the purpose for our life was, everything, and there are people that will fight their whole life and then at the very end realize what it was about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share something that... My dad is on dialysis. My mother died three years ago. And man, he fights it. I told him one day I had a Coke and he just exploded on me. And I said, what are you talking about? You used to drink a six-pack of Diet Coke every day for 15 years. And you're telling me about it? I said, it sounds to me like you're scared. I said, I told you, all you have to do is accept Jesus. Well, that's your belief, and you got yours, and I got mine. Okay. I said, you're gambling with a pretty, pretty heavy stick there, buddy. You don't have the money. And he's... He's rich. He now owns 50 pounds of gold because he started buying gold when it was $35 an ounce. Gold's what? Twelve, fourteen hundred dollars an ounce now? 16 ounces in a pound? He's got 50 pounds of it. I can't even do the math. And he's going to leave that to all his kids. Well, my brothers and sisters, my, my youngest brother and sister are both, my brother is the C CEO of the biggest medical center in the Pittsburgh area, and my sister is uh, a big shot with an um, investment firm. You know, they pay for movies and stuff like that. But none of that will do any good. You can have that until there's no tomorrow and it won't do any good. I have a friend that I grew up with, lives next door to my brother. Made good money because he ran a place where they had concerts. He's a drunk. And my brother said he's about to lose everything and he doesn't even know it. The bank's going to come in and take everything. You see, people never realize it until it has happened. And that's when you have to pray for their soul. Because that, that that weakest moment 
is where we find our strength. You can't, you can't do it on your own. No matter how much money you have, okay? Bill Gates. If he has his way, he'll reduce the world population to 600 million. You don't believe me? Look at the Georgia Guidestones. They don't even know who did those. They have no idea who did those. Yet they have Hebrew and they've got Arabic and they've got every language on earth on them. In Detroit now, they have a, sta a statue of Satan. Right by the courthouse. How's that? And they wonder, yes, exactly right. And they wonder why they can't sell cars there anymore. People just don't want to believe what they've been told. They're all looking for something else. Something mystical. Well, there is nothing mystical. The only thing that was mystical was Yeshua. That's it. I mean, when they tried to kill him, what happened? They all got confused. And he just walked away like they were wasn't even there. They tried to they tried to kill James. Paul tried to kill James. And six other men who met up on a hill in Jerusalem, <clears throat> you can still see it today. Or not in Jerusalem, on the way to Damascus. And that's where Paul got struck down and lost his way to the way to Damascus. And he was people don't realize this, he was struck blind for three years. He had to totally believe on, uh, uh, um, depend on people he couldn't stand for three years. He can restore anything. The Lord can restore anything. If he has folded and bent you, that's because he wants the essence of your soul to go out for others to smell. That's why we go through the things we go through. I know, I've been through it. I never thought at the age of 63 I wouldn't be able to walk on my own. I can't. I need a cart. I probably should have just went and got a grocery cart. Just something to pick stuff up and walk around with it. But I got this little thing. And he wants us to show that injured part of us. He wants us, the world, to know it's okay to be injured. There's nothing wrong with that. Because it is I that will take away the pain. It is I that will help you. I, this right knee, when I stand up and move it, it sounds like a ratchet. You can hear the bone on bone. But a young man from Africa one night prayed for me here, yes. and the pain went away and has not come back. Yes, amen. And I walk bone on bone. Mm -hmm. They say that you can't do that. Oh, you need, you know, mm -hmm. when someone prays and they're carrying the Holy Spirit and it's released, it happens, it works. But people don't want to believe that can happen. See, these great movements begin in places like this. The Lord doesn't need a big church. Oh, look what he did to Notre Dame. Do you think that was by accident? All it is now is a front, a facade. He doesn't need help. And we're going to see them all fall. I've been told that the original menorah is in the basement of the Vatican. What's going to happen to that place? I don't have to tell you. It's going to cave in. The Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem is starting to cave in, and they're not telling anybody. Why? Because guess who owns what's below it? Israel. Once it falls in, that's, not, that's it. In the, in, the, in the inside of that thing around the top, you know what it says? God has no son in Arabic. Okay? Muhammad was a horrible human being. He raped innocent children, 12 years old, and said, oh, that's my wife. Could you imagine if he did that today? He'd string him up. 
or draw and quarter him. Man for years has defied God and thought they could get away with it. And now they're finding out, they're going to find out the hard way, nothing has changed. <clears throat> Not a thing has changed. That's right. There's nothing new under the sun. Remember that song in the 60s? The Yardbirds did it. Turn, turn, turn. Mm -hmm. That's from Lamentations. So much of what we see in our culture comes from here. Because you can't beat these words. There's no refuting, there's no arguing with these words. You can try to. Or you'll have people who expand these words. Like Joseph Smith and the Mormons. No. That's not what he said. He didn't need some goofy kid to go find a couple of gold plates out in the woods somewhere and say, this isn't a new button. No. There's no need for that. Yeah. That's right. Do not add or subtract. It is what it is. Every word in Hebrew is a sentence. The word bit of sheath in the beginning actually means the first prince is tied and covered by the first, the most high. So close you can't tell who's who. And the second thing it says is, let there be light. And in Hebrew, the word light is or, which means the first is pinned to the prince. That they're so close you can't tell who's who. Yet people want to question it all the time. You want to get a book to read? Because it was required reading, it was required learning in the first century. It was the Book of Enoch, seventh form. Oh, yeah. Or Secrets of the Book of Enoch, where he talks about the ten levels of heaven. Enoch was the seventh person born from Adam. That book has so many answers. I mean, it talks about how Cain was killed. Cain was killed when Lamech hit him in the head with a rock or in the eye, just like David hit Goliath. With a sling, it was a sling, and it went right through the back of his head, blew his head out. And the kid that told Cain, who told uh, Lamech Cain was coming, Lamech killed him because the spirit had gone into the kid. So there was no place for it to go after that. Just like when Yeshua got off the boat at Capernaum. The most powerful words we can know to this day is, and what you can do if anybody comes at you and you don't want to do, you say, Gana at Yeshua ben Elohe. I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua, the Son of the Most High. They told us what name they couldn't take. What happened? It ran into a, a bunch of pigs and they ran into the ocean and drowned. His name is the only name in Hebrew that is in the female context. Yeshua is in the female context, it's not in the male context. And that is because he is, in, John, in, in Genesis 3.16, he says, I will put enmity between you, your seed, and my seed. And that's who Yeshua is. He's that enmity. He's that block. He's that way that no, that the enemy can't get through. Isn't that what uh, Archangel Michael said to Satan about the bones of the Moses? The bones of Moses in Jude Satan. 1. Yes. Yes. First thing he said. And there's nothing that can stop that. I've actually seen, I got called to Coatesville, Pennsylvania once to a church that was in an old Rexall pharmacy. And they were, these, I went in and these women were all screaming, this poor black woman was possessed. And they're screaming at her. And I said to the pastor, I said, are they going to beat her up? And he goes, I don't think so. I hope not. I said, do me a favor, ask them to leave. They walked away and I walked over and I just said, can I? At Yeshua ben Elohim, and I tapped her on the forehead, and the front glass of that building bowed six inches. 
in and out. I said, it's gone now. Whatever it is, it's gone. Of course, the problem is it finds for the first thing alive, especially a human, and goes into it. And we have to take this stuff seriously because it occurs. Mm -hmm. If it didn't occur, we wouldn't read about it. Where does it occur? Russia, China, godless nations. Russia was a very, very much God following nation at one time. But they killed off, you know, the king. And who's that guy that did that? They shot him, stabbed him, everything, and he wouldn't die. Oh, Rasputin. Rasputin. That was him. And they did everything to that guy, and he still lived. He was possessed. <coughs> they poisoned him. There wasn't anything they didn't do. Eventually, they burned him to death. They burned him to ashes. We have a lot of people working, walking the earth like that today. Like I said, a lot of politicians, the Clintons, Obama, um, boy, you're almost too hard to remember. Rockefeller? Yeah, absolutely. He was one of the worst. He was one of the worst. And um, especially the one that was in the wheelchair. Huh? Roosevelt. Roosevelt. He he wouldn't listen. And the Lord just folded him up like a picnic table. You know, a, a take away to picnic table. Cool. I mean, we've only had a few men that really stood for what the Lord said. One was Washington. Probably the biggest influence on this country was Abraham Lincoln. He just, when it came to the Lord, he wouldn't take no for an answer. Lincoln wouldn't. And we've had so many since then, but as of late, until this president we have now, <clears throat> man, we had a string of losers. The Clintons, Obama, these are bad people. Yep. I don't care what anybody says. They're bad people. Amen. They don't want anybody. They don't want to do any good for anybody. They want to see everybody hurt. Like I said, Bill Gates believes 600 million people should all be the lips. Well, how's that going to happen? Some sort of, I'll tell you how it'll happen. Some sort of viral warfare. They're going to do some sort of virus that'll kill people wholesale inside of a year you'll see a third of America's population go away from stuff like that. And who, did, who controls all that? The CDC, Center for Disease Control. They control all that. You know they have Ebola stored there? You know what Ebola does to people? It could sweep through this nation in no time and kill easily a third of the population. There's no stopping it because it evolves to protect itself. It's demonic. And we we just have to quit fooling around with stuff, you know. They got people that are genetically modifying food. They're genetically modifying people now. The stem cell research. That's horrible. They have no business doing that. My, my grandmother died from a acute stem cell leukemia. She went in three weeks. But all I can say was was his will and for a purpose. She was the closest person to me in the world. Well, let's... Uh, See who has questions. Anybody have questions?
Michael, you always have a question. Um, how, how old is uh, Tel Aviv? And how long has it uh, been around? Well, Tel Aviv, believe it or not, was established by the Philistines. The Philistines were a group of people that came from Gath, where the giants are from, where Andre the Giant was from, as of late. And they were, they were thugs. And they came into that place, and then they tried to rule Israel from there, and it didn't work out. Of course, you know, Goliath had his... David hit him in the eye, just like Lamech had Cain, and he cut his head off. This guy was so big that his sword, or his spear, I forget it's a spear, weighed 100 pounds. Could you imagine weighing some, throwing something that weighed 100 pounds? Even when I was working out, I couldn't have thought about that. Because when the flood occurred, a large amount of the Nephilim went underground. And they lived through it. This is why they say you shouldn't eat crab or lobster. Because a crab and lobster ate the rotting Nephilim, flesh of the Nephilim. And that's why they're, they're considered an abomination and not unclean. A pig is unclean. Of course, the pig we get today is so clean, it's not even funny. I mean, they're raised on corn, and when I was a kid, we had a pig, and all it did was eat all our garbage. And people forget all this stuff. They don't remember that he told us what to eat and what not to eat to keep us healthy. The one said he was, thing he said we should never eat is blood. Yet the first thing a hunter does when he shoots a deer is drains the blood and drinks it. That's the difference between Jacob and Esau. Jacob had killed a, a goat or a cat or whatever, and the blood was sitting on there, and Esau came in from hunting, and he was famished. So he drank the blood, and that was it. He cursed his people forever. Because he became known as Edom, or blood eater. Those people now are the people of Jordan. Those exact same people. And people just don't believe that these things occurred. Well, they did occur. And that's why we have scripture, and that's why he gave it to us, and why we need to pay attention to what it says. I mean, when you when you burn blood or when you cook blood, it just turns into it looks what looks like what liver looks like before it's cooked. That's what it looks like, and it's of course it's not good for you to eat, but people eat it. Um, there's certain parts of a pig you don't want to eat. People eat chitlins. It's pig intestines. Excuse me. You can eat what you want, but I'm not eating somebody's poop shoot, all right? Because all the pass through that is, is poop. If you ever smell them cooking, it's horrible. It reminds me of when I was in the Air Force in Vietnam, and they would, they would take the, um, where people would go to the bathroom and they pour gas in there and light it on fire. Gas and oil, light it on fire and burn it. It's horrible. But people call it a delicacy. Well, I'm sorry. It's just like gay men today, you know? I don't understand that. God says it's an abomination. It says for two women to lie together is unclean, but for two men it's an abomination because we were made in the image of the Lord. I can't figure out how one man looks at another man's hairy butt and finds love. But they do it. And it's disgusting. <laughs> you know, they think nothing of it. Most popular show on TV, Big Big Bang Theory. The guy that plays Sheldon is gay. All Hollywood is like that. 
I'm telling you right now, in our lifetime, we're going to see Hollywood burn to the ground. It is a filthy place. It is a filthy place. But we, you know, we, we live in a time period where our most, the thing we trust the most is what we see on TV. That's become our Bible. And you got to be real careful what you watch on that television. My wife got a TV that's 60 inches. It's so big it's got to be curved. I feel like I'm sitting in a theater while I'm watching this goofy thing. I mean, you couldn't get away with it from it if you wanted to. I think the neighbors next door, they got rid of cable because they watch our TV. <laughs> it's so big. It's bad when you look out on the sidewalk in the summer and there's a bunch of kids out there. They think they're at the drive-in. They're at the walk-in. And we... We just continue with this stuff. And we have to we have to let it go. Any more questions? Maybe we got another question? Yeah, um you know, end times Babylon and Revelation, is that a literal place or is that just No, uh, it's a little no, it's I'll tell you where that is. Babylon was a place where all uh, trade routes crossed. Where's the one spot on earth where all trade routes cross? Wall Street. Wall Street. There is no gold in Fort Knox anymore. People don't know that. It's all underneath Wall Street. They've got it all stored in caverns down there. And we just bought a trillion dollars worth of gold from the Chinese. So we are now going back on the gold standard. Most people don't know that. The other thing I think you got to look out for is I think we're going to see a new um, currency. They're called blue notes, and it's going to be um, valid in all of the British, you know, Britain, Ireland, Canada, and Australia, and America. Those are going to be the four nations that are going to forge together. Because we have to stand for what the Lord wants. And those are the four places that stand for what the Lord wants. Welcome. This is Sister Joan, Secretary for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray, lay hands on you and your need and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in your life. Starting today, you will never be the same. If you would like to schedule a speaking engagement, contact our ministry. All glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.